Um, so, yeah, as I said before, we have broken that up in, in different topic areas, basically. So the next two uh, sessions will be mostly on towards connectivity. Um, the first one's from me talking about Linux WPAN. Um, just, just a reference for everyone who's not really familiar with that. So basically that's IEEE 800.215.4, which is a spec for low power um, wireless, basically. It's used in things like Zigbee and Thread and so on. So that's um, mostly more on the, on the embedded uh, side for my controllers and so on. But we have a Linux subsystem for quite a while on that one. And uh, we want to do some regular updates here to see what's going on. And I actually want to use it as a discussion place as well. So um, a colleague maintainer of mine, Alexander, is online as well. So if you want, so Alex, if you want to raise your voice or something, make sure that you're um, coming in with microphone and camera and so on, right? And yeah, so let's get, let's get started here. Yeah, thank you. So the agenda, um, we have different file layers basically that we have supporting. The one we are heavily supporting is 2.4 gigahertz. There's not really much to update on that front. Um, but there's also things like sub gigahertz and ultra wideband that are in newer standards of the specification. Um, there are some different use cases for that that could be interesting. So I want to touch upon that. Um, then there's in general uh, the management layer uh, support stuff we have been doing. So Miguel who comes in here has worked on that quite a bit. I want to talk a little bit about like what we have there, what are the gaps, what is missing. And then one thing that comes up now and again is that there are companies or vendors or just uh, people that want to use their own stack on top of what we're having, just reusing some of the Phi and, and the, the basic low-level driver, basically, and want to use the rest of that in user space and so on. So it's a bit of a difficult situation for us how we want to deal with that from a kernel perspective. And then um, I am also looking for a little bit of feedback um, for a user space component we, we need to write basically as a, as a pen coordinator to handle all the devices and so on. So that's basically the topics I'm touching. Feel free to interrupt me any time here. This is supposed to be a, a session on discussion and so on that I only have like five or six slides anyway. So um, feel free to go into that. Okay, so sub gigahertz. Um, there is partial support for file layer on that. We also have one driver that actually supports it. Um, that does exist. We don't have anything in 15.4 I'm aware of that, that we are lacking there um, to support that. But maybe on the more ex uh, extended feature set or something like that on some use cases that might be the case. So if anyone here has a use case for that, please let me know. Um, if not, we can we can go over that. So I know that the people from uh, from BeagleBoard and so on are interested in that. They have a device called Beagle Connect, and uh, that is running on sub gigahertz as well. But there's there's support on on Zephyr on that side, so we could actually have like testing going back and forth. But uh, besides that, there's no one really stepping up on on doing any work on that so far. I mean, I know that the people from Beagle uh, from BeagleBoard wanted to do that, but I mean, they're lacking resources as everybody else. So that's not going to happen right now. So if you don't have any comments or questions on that, we can we can skip forward to the next one. Okay. Uh, the mic. It's there. Uh, yeah, actually, um, for the CC13XX platform, they just added uh, sub gigahertz support in Zephyr. I'm pretty sure if it hasn't been merged already, it's like in the process of being merged. Uh, but uh, aside from, I mean, it's all actually working pretty well. Florian Grandel is a uh, maintainer now of 802.15.4 and Zephyr, and he's actually doing, doing a really great job keeping to the specs, so. Yeah, I mean, oh, Alex, yeah, if you, if you go ahead. Yeah, I think um, but the most people are concerned about the sub gigahertz area is that uh, there's a lot of regulations uh, and it is always different in the um, different countries and we was talking about one to add some 802.15.4 uh, to the regular uh, regulator database for of wireless but I, I think a lot of people um, concerned about this, that they cannot um, at least verify that this 
the specific file has a specific setting that's not allowed to use in some different countries. Yeah, I mean, you, you touched on that. So we had the idea of using like DirectDB stuff that a lot of people are using or something. We could extend that or have our own version of that or something. So that is possible, but it really depends on actual companies or people using it. So before we, we go that route and, and do all the work for that. Do you comment or? Oh, no, I okay. just okay. the mic. Okay. Um, Uh, last time I, I looked into it, there what there might not have been complete sub gigahertz support in Linux, but I haven't checked in in a while. I mean, as I said, there, there might be gaps. So yeah. I know that we have like at least uh, more of the file layers listed. I have one USB device that is actually using a sub gigahertz uh, transceiver on it. So that's a variant of the AT USB with, with different firmware and so on. So that is there, but I have nothing really to test it against. To be fair, I have a Beagle Connect at home, so I could I need to find the time to actually do that. Um, but yeah. In general, I'm, I'm looking more for like people that actually want to use it and have use cases before we do more work in that regard. Okay, so basically um, with that, similar to that, we have ultra wideband that is newer and a lot of people have more interest in that because of like the, the possibilities that it opens up in, in terms of like speed of connection or also uh, services like location arranging or stuff like that. Um, so there is no real good support for that. We don't have any hardware support for it right now. Um, there need to be added additions to the file layer support and so on. Um, I don't think for Mac we need anything. Uh, Miguel, please correct me if I'm, I'm wrong there for Mac. Mac should be. Same. Okay, so that's all the same. And then on top of that, you could go ahead and have services like location ranging and so on. So that is what people could really be interested in. Um, but for that, we would need to get all the, the plumbing basically in place. Um, so again, this would be how much interest is there? So is there other people around that actually want to do that, have that in products, have some, maybe something out of tree that they want to use or so? Um, I, I need to really understand like where to allocate our resources in a really tiny uh, project here, how, how to do that. So then I have a question for Miguel. So, I mean, we, we talked about that before offline. So I know that you have been working on some, some ultra wideband drivers. So maybe you can give us like a summary of what the status is, what we can, is that something we can expect to get in? Is that, yeah, how difficult it would be? Yeah, um, so indeed I, well, worked a bit on the ultra wideband support recently. Um, it didn't make it upstream because uh, so far indeed the, there is uh, no working hardware with the mainline Linux and the, uh, all the changes I uh, managed to do. Um, well, well, there are many small things that needed to be improved in the, in, the, in the core in order to be able to support those devices. And I believe in the core I have something that is now pretty okay, uh, even though it needs a little bit more polishing, but otherwise uh, it should handle all the, 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 the specificities of those devices. But with the lack of um, uh, working hardware right now, it's still in my Git tree. However, of course, if anyone uh, wants to, to, to play a little bit with it, um, well, I planned on sending it uh, when once the, the hardware was working. Uh, so far, I didn't manage to reach that point, uh, but uh, that's uh, of course something that can be shared. If can you not just? Uh, Alex, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to ask yeah, uh, if if, um, if there are any chipsets that are particularly good for ultra wideband, even if it's not mass produced or something. If someone else wants to evaluate it and see how it goes, can you recommend anything? So I mean, I think as I said, but there's like there was DecaWave that was before, and they bought Bakovo. Um, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Um, and I think that could be something that is available off the shelf. I mean, that's one of the things I talked to uh, Miguel before. It, I'm a bit reluctant to get all the stuff in if there's no hardware easily available to like get and off the shelf and, and buy and play around with. Um, but if that is the case and we have a, at least a, a basic driver for that, I would be happy to expand the support we have for auto wideband. So that yeah, would be yeah. Indeed, the, the, the DW3000 uh, is the, well, uh, the device I tried to make uh, uh, up and working, um, so so far it was a failure, but uh, there is a bit of code uh, trying to, to, to make it work. Uh, the, um, 
kind of issue with it is that it's very complex and uh, the, the design of this chip involves a lot of uh, register configuration for the RF part. Um, so even without going too deep into the configuration, I mean without using any advanced features like the ranking thing and so on, uh, just sending a data packet is, uh, uh, well, it involves a lot of configuration. But it is definitely feasible and uh, Corvo shares support for it. Uh, and there is there is a uh, public repository with a lot of configuration, but still it works. I, I tested it. Okay, so I mean, I would I would hope that when you find the time to actually work on that a bit more and then send out an RFC, I would really appreciate that, and then we can can look from there. I would also really be interested in what kind of changes we need to. I mean, there will be some some smaller file changes, but I think that that might be uh, uh, easy to do. Um, but for the Mac layer, for all the extra services that you run on top, I mean, that also comes in this, this new spec that we are not supporting. I mean, basically, we are supporting an I2E spec that is coming from 2006, and there are many, many new versions by now. I think the latest one is from 2020. And um, so really catching up on all these things. Um, but I only want to do that if we have actual some, some use cases drives that actually make, make use of that. Because without that, it's just dead code that we have lying around and nobody's using or maintaining it, so. Uh, slightly, uh, maybe something that is slightly complex to, to implement in Linux um, is the, the timing requirements. Mm -hmm. uh, for the, 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 the location and ranging, ranging part, um, we need to be very precise and know exactly when the packet uh, goes out and goes in. Uh, so we might need some extra channels to handle that. And I have no idea exactly how it should be implemented in the, in the, 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 the Mac part, uh, but we will need at some point a straightforward way to stamp the packets or at least uh, tell the, 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 the packet scheduler when it needs to, to send the packets and synchronize that with the Linux clocks. Okay. Does the hardware actually have some timer support that we can, some hardware timer that we can use for that or so? I mean, because some of the ships I've seen are very, very simple and don't have anything of that, but some of the more advanced ships or something, they have like additional timers for that and so. Yeah, I, I think there is some, um, some hardware for that, um, but currently no part of the framework is capable of uh, handling that. And what needs to be done is synchronizing uh, yeah. with your own clocks. Um, how are the chips uh, connected via SPI? Yeah, most of them, I would say like 80-90% of them are really just SPI and then you additional can, 3 or 4 GPIOs for research. In your SPI so. message you can uh, add a timestamp pointer and then the SPI framework takes a timestamp. Oh, and then we can get it from there and then we, yeah. that's good. A system timestamp. Okay, thank you, that, that's good. And. Uh, if you really, really need precise timestamps, um, you can hack your SPI driver to do not DMA, but polling and stuff, and even stop interrupts, but... Okay, that, I mean, right Vladimir, now I'm looking at more like from a maintainer yeah. platform perspective, yeah. so, but for a product that would definitely yeah. might, might help, but... Um, Vladimir Oltan has done it for the uh, SPI switches, the Ethernet switches which are connected via SPI for PTP stuff. Nope. I just saw actually on the Zephyr Discord, uh, Johan F uh, mentioned that we actually do have DW1000 uh, support in the Zephyr tree today. So if anybody's ready to play around with it. Uh, and I think it's on, yeah. And I think it's on, there's an NRF uh, MCU attached to that. So should be 100% supported. So if you, anybody wants to play around with that, that's a great platform, it sounds like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, upgrade, I guess. <laughs> Any more comments, questions on that? Alex, anything from you, no? No, but uh, if there's some Mac, um, soft Mac requirements, and Sapphire already uh, supports it, I, I think we can, we can we don't need any hardware for this. We can find a way to put it 
to connect it over HW simulator. Yeah, I, I already did that with AF packet and raw packets that uh, I have simply the yeah, user space stack and Sapphire has a platform to run as a F binary in some kind of sandbox mode. Uh, I think th this is possible to, to to have some testing. Yeah, yeah, yeah to play around with it. It's, it's more the question if like some of the timing requirements that come from the spec from something like uh, ultra wideband or vSUN or something like that, they have specific hard timing requirements that are it's yeah. difficult to handle with Linux, but I mean, we have preempt RT yeah. now, so yeah. <laughs> you can fall back to that. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe th this, you can look at the, what the Wi-Fi pipe people are doing for the Wi-Fi ranging stuff. There, there are basically timers in the hardware which can timestamp your packets, and you can synchronize these timers with a system clock, and then you don't need real-time reactions to packets, but you only need precise timestamping in the Mac or Fi. That was the reason why I was asking for the timers of the of the chipset because I was yeah, but that's counting. But that's also possible for uh, time triggered can and so on. So these mechanisms are pretty common. Okay. Cool. okay, so if you are good with that, I would move to the next topic. You only have like eight minutes left. So MLE support. I mean, get that something what Miguel was working on for a long time. We didn't have anything like that. Um, now we have a good set. We have like beacon sending. We have beacon scanning as for for beacons active and passive. We have association dissociation uh, of devices and so on. Um, there are more things, as I mentioned uh, before. We see newer spec versions coming in. There are more things available that we could or should implement. Just this week, someone mentioned on the main list the PHR for extended MTU. So you, normally, 1504 has only like 127 uh, octets of MTU, which is really small. Uh, but for machine to machine, that's normally OK. But now they have me mechanisms in place to actually extend that to 2,480, uh, no, 2084, 48, go on, come on. Um, and that's something we might want to implement, but that is really opening up a lot of can of worms in our stack currently because we kind of expect this kind of size. So we need to see how how easy to do how easy it is to do that and so on. Um, then we have some more additional bands and support in the files. I think a lot of that was already added, but there might be more coming in. But a lot of these things are yeah more or less like easy defines and some tables and so on you can get added and then it really depends on the hardware support to actually use that and, and make sure that we synchronize that with the stack correctly and so on. Anything on that? Do you have uh, any, so all of the stuff you had on that is, is merged already, right? Yeah. So, okay, no, nothing pending or so. So, good, okay. But with that, um, let me go to the other one first. So, based on the MLE stuff, um, we now have that all in, in the kernel. We have some, some small tools in user space to actually test that, uh, trigger and, and scan and so on to make sure everything is working or sending out beacons and so on. That is uh, working fine. But we need uh, actually a service now that is running and making sure that it handles the network correctly. So in 1504 terms, that's a PEN, uh, personal area network coordinator that is handling stuff like uh, sending out the beacons, uh, getting the requests for association, handing out a short address, and so on, keeping the lease basically like the DTP server and so on, doing all of the kinds of these things. So that would be something we need to get started at some point. Um, I just want to make sure that nobody else is already working on that. So I don't know, Miguel, Alex, anyone of you having code for that or? Yeah. Um, so I, I don't have any, any well, coordinator, user space service, yeah. proof of concept like that. Uh, however, I shared uh, with all the commits I've sent on the mailing list, the, 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 in particular in the cover letters, uh, all the exchanges that uh, were needed from user space. So it is very easy to replicate and have a very s small setup with the, the discovery, well, all the commands with the discovery, the association and so on. So now there is just the, the, the coding part, I mean, uh, that needs to be done if we want to, to create this service. Plus adding all the logic, especially when you want to create an, a group of devices uh, for allowing or disallowing new devices to join your, uh, uh, your PAN. So this is something that has not been uh, handled so far. 
No, no, I'm, I'm aware of that. I tested all of these things before with, with, the, with the tooling we have. I just wanted to understand if, if there is something already that we can, can get started or if that's something we basically start from scratch. So, yeah, there would be other things that could be added to the service um, which are not necessary for the basic, basic stuff, but it could be something like making sure that we have the AQI values available for routing protocols that are interested in that. And also things like um, generic header compression, they have like specific mechanisms actually to let other nodes know that they support these compression uh, techniques and we could send out the neighbor discovery messages in there and, and collecting it from the other nodes to make sure that these are shared correctly and so on. So that could be something to be added into, into that one as well. Um, yeah, I will, I will think about that a little bit more um, and then we can, we can talk about that on the main list and figure out who to, uh, how to start on that one basically. So. Questions on that? Is there a question? So let me go back to the to the other one. So I mentioned that initially um, there are stacks that are running um, various things like there's ZBoss for for Zigbee, there's OpenThread which does the thread protocol implementation, there's some Bison stack and so on. So there are all of them basically they run user space and um, want to find a way to use the, the hardware um, directly from us. So all of them can use uh, things like SPI dev or so, fall back to that, and then do all the implementation in user space directly. There has been various discussions with, with these uh, projects if we can find a way to, um, to use our file layer and Mac support and so on. It always falls short at some point because we didn't support something they needed or they have like some optimized routines and so on or they just want to have like a better control over their source code and so on. So right now I always said like I'm, I'm not interested in supporting them in a way that they can use their own stack and not, do, not working to other, uh, together with us. Um, but I feel a bit more guilty about that recently because we are not catching up, we are not providing all the stuff they need. So I wanted to reach out here and see from, from other people what kind of uh, experience they had with opening up low-level uh, driver access in their subsystem or something like that. Because right now that, that feels like a terrible choice to do. But sometimes um, I'm wondering is that if that is still an option, if we find like some, some good middle ground there. So I, I'm not sure if anybody has real experience with that here or so, but I wanted at least to bring that up here because that is a crowd that, that might can comment on that. Let me try. It doesn't have to be like a full answer. <laughs> oh. Enough. Yeah. Uh, oh, Alex, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think uh, for that we need to provide uh, a better socket interface because uh, it always depends what they're doing on the Mac layer, and there are some special frame types which we don't support because the only socket interface only can transmit some um, data frames. So far, I know, and uh, yeah, we can. We just don't provide anything, but but they can do otherwise. No. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, it, it's definitely it's not something we can just say, okay, just start using it or something, and it'd be good. It would also something we need to support, and I don't know if that is worthwhile to spend any energy on that one instead of like fixing up the stuff that they need to do. It. I mean, that was just an idea I want to throw out there because it feels like a few years we are dragging around that and there's no, no progress on that. But on the other hand, we see the work Miguel was doing on the MLE stuff and so on, there's a lot of gaps closed already, so maybe maybe that is helping. Yes, I, I agree that uh, this, this goes into the right direction to support that. Okay, so with that, uh, I'm running out of time. So uh, thank you all for listening in. Thanks for your comments and then the next speaker's up.